In a recent video, I listed the 10 characteristics of a cult. In this video, I want to examine one of the most powerful cults that has ever existed in the Western world, the cult that calls itself environmentalism. Marxism is the most powerful cult in the West, but it overlaps greatly with environmentalism, which is the next most powerful cult. Marxism is a Christian cult. Its basic foundation comes out of the Christian doctrine of the equal worth of all humans, taught in Genesis. Environmentalism is a pagan cult. It worships nature. I want to list the seven chief characteristics of environmentalism and the Christian response. Characteristic number one, environmentalists deny the existence of God. The earth was not created by God, nor is it controlled by Him. There is no God to protect us. We are alone in a hostile universe. The Christian response? Psalm 53.1 says, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I like Spurgeon's pithy comment. If the Bible calls such a man a fool, we dare call him no less. In Romans 1, Paul analyzes man's descent into pagan darkness. In verse 18, he says that men know God exists, but they suppress that knowledge. They do not thank or honor God. And instead of worshiping him, they began to worship nature. Does that sound familiar? That brings us to characteristic two, nature is to be worshiped because it is sacred. Instead of worshiping the true God, men instead worship crawling creatures, according to Paul in Romans 1, or Gaia, Mother Earth, according to bumper stickers. The Bible tells the truth about nature. Nature is fallen and it is dangerous. Mankind has spent his entire existence trying to keep nature from killing him. Today's environmentalist has these sentimental feelings about nature because we have a very high level of technology protecting us from the natural world. I used to ask my students, uh, so nature is sacred. What if I turn you loose in the middle of Wyoming in the wintertime with just the clothes on your back how long do you think it would take nature to do you in? Characteristic number three. The environmentalists believe that man is destroying the earth. The most important part of the environmentalist catechism is not only that the earth is warming, but that it is producing catastrophes, catastrophic global warming, that will obliterate life on earth as we know it. Now this is absurd. I could point to any number of sources, but let me give you one. Uh, look up Björn Lomborg's book, False Alarm. He's a Danish scientist and a believer in global warming, but argues that we have the technology and wealth to handle any problems created by the Earth's warming. The predictions of climate apocalypse are nonsense. I have a series of videos elsewhere on this channel that catalog all the dire predictions of the last hundred years, none of which have occurred. I call the series, The Great Deceptions of My Lifetime. Characteristic number four, man is not created in the image of God, according to environmentalists, but is just another animal. Environmentalists hold that the only thing special about man is his capacity for destruction. He has been called a cancer and a bacteria and a curse and a plague and a host of other negatives. Of course, Christianity teaches that man is a unique being, created in God's image, and of infinite worth and value. The greatest enemy of the world's poor is the Green Movement. Recently, in an editorial for the Wall Street Journal, the president of Uganda pled for his continent to be freed from the mad commitment to renewables and be allowed to develop inexpensive sources of energy. Africa desperately needs fossil fuels to build its economy. But the Greens, already extremely rich, are standing in the way. They want to save the earth, but they want to do it at the expense of other people. Characteristic number five, Greens argue the world has too many people. You don't have to read three lines of any Green article before you find overpopulation as a chief culprit and the need to eradicate people, especially poor third world people. God has told us to multiply and replenish the earth, that children are a blessing. And blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. The world does not have too many people. 
Characteristic number six, government is the answer to all our problems. We must give politicians all our money and power so that they can prevent the apocalypse. Now, I have argued elsewhere that for the left, government has taken the place of God. Uh, the same is true for Greens. Ironically, they admit that at present, nothing effective is being done by government or anyone else to slow the warming of the earth. The Chinese government and the Indian government has not the remotest interest in the Green Agenda. They intend to power and build their economies, and they intend to use fossil fuels to do it. So at the end of the day, the Greens admit that their efforts are futile anyway. So why do they continue to pursue their agenda? They have religious fervor. Characteristic number seven. Environmental activism may not accomplish anything of substance, but it is an opportunity for someone to show how righteous they are. By taking green political stances, you show the world that you are a good and caring person. Again, as I said, environmentalists make no sacrifices for what they believe. Their rhetoric and actions are all symbolic. They are masters of the costless gesture. They want to make themselves look righteous without paying any price. The environmental movement is arguably the most destructive in human history. Their policies and so-called science has caused the death of well over 200 million people. They have caused massive human suffering and massive human fatalities. Because of green hysteria, many people have chosen to limit their family size, but this has come at the expense of female babies. Demographers estimate that there are 150 million or more missing little girls in the world, victims of sex selection abortion based on environmental assumptions. Matt Purple, a writer for The Spectator, said recently, one of the best kept secrets in American politics is that the anti-fracking movement is rolling in Russian money. Yes, the Russians want Western environmental groups to suppress the Western energy sector, thus increasing the price and value of Russian oil. Many commentators have argued this week that without the green suppression of Western energy, Vladimir Putin would never have had enough money to invade Ukraine. The Greens are a large, powerful, and dangerous cult. As Christians, we must stand against all ideologies that assault the truth of our God and produce terrible consequences. Thanks for listening. May our God bless you this day in a mighty way.